welcome to the studio. I'm Lydia and I make PDF patterns and sewing tutorials here on YouTube just like this one. And today I'm very excited to present to you my new pattern, the bubble frock. It is in size 0 to 20 so you can get that on my website, it's linked below. Today I'm going to walk you through the detailed instructions for how to sew it from start to finish. And if you make the bubble frog, hashtag bubble frog, and tag me at Lydia Naomi Studio on Instagram, I would love to see it. So without further ado, let's get started. Just a few things before we get started. All of my patterns include seam allowance and the notch length is half the depth of the seam. So if the seam allowance is 3 8 or one centimeter, the notch will be 3 16 or five millimeters in length. Hems are usually one inch or 2.5 centimeters or more. Check your pattern. All of my patterns contain fabric type suggestions, amount of fabric for your size, and cut layouts for how to configure your pieces on the fabric. You can find these in the read first file. All of my patterns contain written instructions found at the end of the read first file. And lastly, if you need help printing your pattern, I have a video tutorial entirely dedicated to walking you through how to do that. You'll find that link below and also in your pattern. I'm going to give you a summary of what materials you need to make this garment. So you will need some shell fabric, lining fabric, light woven fusible interfacing, matching thread, a 9 inch invisible zipper, the one I have will be significantly shortened, fray check, pinking shears, these are optional but very helpful, zipper feet, regular and invisible, a hem rolling foot, this is optional. Then you'll need chalk or a disappearing fabric pen, iron pins, scissors and or rotary blade. These are my favorite scissors by LDH Scissors. Any of these materials I mentioned will be listed in the description. And I just want to encourage you, before using your best fabric to make this garment, I encourage you to make a toile in muslin. You can just sew up one layer without a zipper and pin it on yourself. That way you'll be able to know if you need to make adjustments or select another size. Before cutting your scallop trim and bodice shell and lining pieces, it's best to apply fusible interfacing to the fabric. You can cut out a few rectangles that will fit the pattern pieces and apply fusible interfacing to those pieces. Then cut out your scallop trim and bodice pieces from your fused fabric. I like doing it this way because it helps prevent your pieces from possible shrinkage or warping. Also make sure that you cut a notch at the top and bottom of every piece that is cut on a fold. This marks the center of the piece. For the scallop trim, cut a rectangle of your fabric that will fit the pattern piece and apply fusible interfacing to it. Then cut out your pieces. I cut both shell and lining from the shell fabric. And believe me, it is so much easier to just apply fusible interfacing before cutting your pieces. Also, I just wanna help you understand this skirt pattern piece. Some of my pattern testers were a little confused. So basically, this is a two-in-one pattern piece and that's to save paper. So we have our front skirt, which is slightly raised in the middle because our front bodice is raised in the center front and that's why it's curved like this. And so right here, I'm showing you the information for the front skirt and showing you the shape of the skirt. So you need to cut one on fold in shell and cut one on fold in lining if you're doing a lining. And for the lining, you will shorten here at this dotted line. So you just want your lining to be a little bit shorter. So this fold indicator here says front skirt on fold. That means you're only gonna cut the front skirt on fold. When it comes to the back skirt, we are going to cut two of these because we're not going to cut it on fold. We're gonna actually fold down this top area because it's the rise for the front but the back skirt is just a rectangle so just fold it down and then when it's folded down you are going to cut this piece out and that's why I just have this plain rectangle here to indicate the shape for the back skirt. So you're going to cut two shell, two lining, shorten at the dotted line. Also to conserve paper this piece is the blouse length. So if you want to have the midi length dress, 
you're gonna add 13 inches for the midi, that's mid thigh length, and then you can add 26 and a half inches for the midi or lower calf length. And this is based on a 5'4 height. So if you're taller, then you might wanna add a little more than 13 inches or 26.5 inches. So if you want to make the skirt piece longer, place this on your fabric and then just measure down and mark it on the fabric. Or what you could do is you can get some paper Then you're just gonna take your ruler and lengthen it by extending the line. Just keep it parallel to this front line. And then you can add that 13 inches or 20 inches or whatever you want. Measure it down from the bottom. So that's 13 inches added to the piece for the mini length. And then I would just cut this out and that's my piece all ready to cut out in the mini length. I've cut the top pieces and all of the lining pieces were cut in the same fabric with fusible interfacing on the back. And then for the skirt, I still have to cut out the lining in the white fabric that I have. When I cut the lining pieces, I'm going to make them an inch shorter at the hem just so that they're not poking out. After cutting everything out, start with creating your shoulder straps. You can cut them out on the straight of grain and then use a bias tape maker or just manually fold in the edges and then top stitch it up into a strap. Or when you purchase your fabric, get an extra half yard or meter to cut out your straps on the bias like I did. The bias adds stretch so that when you create skinny straps, it's a little easier to turn out. Then I'm going to sew a skinny strap by sewing about 3 16 or 4 millimeters from the fold. And then I snip a little notch in the end, hook a bobby pin around the loop that's created to pull it through. But first, make sure you trim down the seam allowance to about an eighth or three millimeters. And there are beautiful skinny straps. I cut out my scallop stitch template in a heavier weight paper so that it would be easier to trace around. Lay this template against the wrong side of your scallop trim lining piece or the piece that will face your body when wearing it and trace around it to mark the stitch line. Place the right sides of your scallop trim together and pin them very well together. I also baste it together just to be safe along the top as well so that the layers don't shift as I sew. Decrease your stitch length and sew along your guideline. Place your last stitch of the curve at the very point of the scallop valley and leave the needle down. Then lift up your foot and pivot to start the new curve. When sewing, I keep my eye on the stitch line that I drew in. If I can keep the stitch line in the path of the needle by always keeping it in line with that little notch on my machine foot, I'll be able to accurately follow the curve. After you're done sewing, apply fray check at each point over the stitch line on both sides and wait about 15 to 30 minutes to let it dry. Later we will have to snip right to the point, so we need reinforcement so that the fabric doesn't fray and unravel when we turn it out. Make sure that you test your fray check on the fabric beforehand so that you can ensure it won't leave a darkened patch. While we wait for this to dry, let's move on to the main body of the dress. 
I have here my shell and lining of the front, top, and bottom bodice panels. As you can see, I use the same fabric for both, which you can do as well. Make sure that you add the designated lining yardage to your shell yardage mounts. With right sides together, match the notches of the front, top, and bodice panels, and sew at 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter. Then press open the seam. I do this by first pressing the sides and then the center so that I don't flatten the bust curve. As you can see, I did this also for the lining. The lining pieces will be sewn together almost as its own dress until it's joined to the shell near the end of construction. Now let's gather the skirt pieces. This is the front shell piece which is raised in the center. These are the two back shell pieces. This is the front of the lining piece and these are the backs. Make sure you increase your stitch length to its highest and sew two lines of stitching along the top of each skirt panel. I sew one of the stitches within the 3 8 or 1 centimeter seam allowance and one outside of it. I just remove these stitches after sewing it to the bodice. Next, gather these pieces to match their corresponding bodice piece. Then, with right sides together, sew the gathered skirt pieces to the front and back bodice pieces at 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter. Do the exact same steps for the lining separately. And here they are all done. At this point, it will be easiest to apply your zipper to the back. I have a massive zipper, so I measured nine inches from the top and marked it with a pin. Next, with a warm iron, I smooth open the zipper teeth, which will allow me to get close to the teeth when sewing so that the zipper ends up being completely invisible. Now it's time to sew it to the dress. With the zipper facing up and the good side of your back dress panels facing up, unzip the zipper and turn over the one side so that the right side of the zipper faces the right side of the back dress. Line up the top of the zipper at the top edge of the dress and pin in place. I then change the foot to an invisible zipper foot that has two grooves that sit over the zipper teeth. Then I place my zipper under the foot in the appropriate groove and sew. Back stitching, of course, at the beginning and the end where I marked it. Then I zip up the zipper and on the unsewn side of the zipper tape, I mark where it lines up with the seam of the dress with a pin. Then I open up the zipper again, lay the unsewn side right side to the other side of the back panel and sew it up. This time using the other groove of the zipper foot. When I zipped it up after the fact, I was so excited to see that the seams lined up perfectly. After this, sew up the remaining opening of the center back. You can use a regular zipper foot to get close to the zipper. Press open this seam. And if your zipper is longer than you need, like mine is, you can easily shorten it. So what you want to do is switch to a zigzag stitch and make sure that it's at its highest width. Reduce the stitch length to zero so that it just sews on the spot. Then place your zipper with the teeth centered under the needle and sew a nice end stitch. Then snip off the excess. I sewed a tiny little stitch to attach the zipper end to the seam allowance of the back seam to help it lay flat. Once your back shell is fully assembled, add your front by placing them right sides together and sewing up the side seams at 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter. 
Do this also for the lining and press open those seams. It is now time to trim and turn out those scallops. Now that the fray check has dried, snip that seam allowance of your scallops right down to each point, stopping just before the stitch. You can add more fray check to this area if you think that you need it, but make sure you let it dry before continuing. Then trim the curves of the scallops 1 8 or a couple millimeters away from the stitching with pinking shears if you have them. If you don't have pinking shears, you'll have to snip little triangles along each curve to get a nice rounded scallop. Turn out the scallops carefully and if the corners don't lay flat, carefully snip down further to the point. Be careful not to snip the stitch. Then press your scallops to make them nice and crisp. It may require a bit of fiddling to get a nice smooth curve. Next, apply the scallop trim along the top of the assembled bodice, matching the center notch to the upper bodice shell with right sides facing. Apply straps at their notches over top of the trim. The tail of the strap should hang over the edge by 5 8 or 16 millimeters, a total of one inch from your stitch line. Machine baste this in place with the seam allowance about 3 16 or 5 millimeters from the edge. At this point it will be good to see how the straps fit on you so that you can adjust them before sewing the final seam. Just make sure you pin them or tack them at the actual sew line, not the baseline. If you sewed a bias cut skinny strap, they will stretch out a bit so you may have to shorten them even more. Next, match the top of your lining bodice with right sides facing to the shell and sew 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter along the top of your bodice. At this point, if you want to understitch, you can. It's actually easier to do it at this point. For some reason, I did it after. After the top seam is sewn, you're going to enclose the zipper with the lining. So, with right sides together, use your zipper foot to sew down the zipper seam, stopping before the end of the zipper. When this is done, clip corners and turn out. Finish by closing up the remaining opening of the center back lining seam with a regular zipper foot, just as we did for the shell. At this point, I understitch the seam along the lining side. I do this by pushing the seam allowance towards the lining and top stitching it close to the seam on the lining side. And we are almost done.
Now you're going to want to tack the shell and lining together. So you can grab the seam allowance of the front and just stitch a small portion there. And you can also do a little stitch at each side seam. Just stitching the seam allowance together. This will just keep the lining from riding up or flopping around. And it's just that extra step to give it a little bit more of a professional finish. Lastly, we are going to hem. Hem the skirt shell and lining separately. The lining should be at least an inch shorter so that it doesn't poke out when you're wearing it. Use the hem rolling foot or manually turn over the edge 3 sixteenths or 5 millimeters twice. I used the hem rolling foot on the shell. First, I roll the edge an eighth twice and place it under the foot and needle. I get the needle down in the foot and then guide the fabric into the foot. Then as I sew, I curl the fabric as I go to guide it into that roll. When I get close to where I started, I have the needle down and lift up the foot and take the fabric out of the foot, making sure that it's still folded under and then I just sew it to finish it off. For the lining, I just hand folded the hem myself and you can do that too if you don't have a hem rolling foot. finished the dress. I hope you enjoy your own version of the bubble frock. <laughs>